Hello, this is Mark Rosenbaum from Verivo. I'm here to show you how simple it is to build an application from scratch using our platform. The app that I'm going to build today is based on version 7.3 of our platform and will run natively across iOS, Android, and BlackBerry devices. The use case that I chose for uh, this application is a wine distribution app, uh, which might be used by a winery or by a distributor to be able to track uh, information about their products and also where uh, those wines are sold. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is launch Application Studio and I'm going to hit this Create New Application button which generates a new app. I'll give it a name called Wine Finder and I'll come under my Data Source Manager and create a new data source. We'll call it Wine Data and I'm going to choose our REST plugin to pull a, from a, a REST web service where my data will, uh, will come to me from. Type in a, a, the name of my metadata file, which is basically an XML file that describes the REST web services. Right away, you can see when I test the connection, I have some, uh, a data source created. It exposes to me two source objects called location and products. So I will grab those over, drop them in place to create new entities. And if I double click on the products entity, you can see here are the fields that make up that entity. It's all described for me visually. I'll select both of those entities, right click, say create screens for my default workflow, my default set of screens. So now when I go there, I'm brought to my screen manager. I can auto refresh those screens. It lays them out nicely for me and you can see I've got a few screens created. Location list, location summary, product list, and so on. This is just a starting point. I can go in and customize them as much as I want. If I double click on locations list, you can see it's a very basic grid for now. This was generated for me automatically. It didn't have to do it manually. So now let's just jump over to my user management. I'll choose a demo user and I'm going to provision him for my new application. Assign him to my default workflow and hit save. So now let's jump over to my simulators and I'm just going to simply log in for the first time as a demo user. I've got iPhone on the left, Android in the middle, Blackberry on the right. And you can see right away I've got a basic list screen with data where I've got some locations and uh, some GPS coordinates, the latitude and longitude. And that loads up on uh, all three of my devices. And there's our basic list. So that's a good starting point. Let's go back now and let's improve on that screen. Let's uh, make an iteration and maybe uh, uh, spice up the UI a little bit. I'll come to my locations list and I'm going to change this one drop down here, the display mode. Um, initially it's set to a basic list, but I'm going to actually change that to be um, a standard map. That's simply a, a, a one property of the, the screen. So then I'm going to um, add a, this name field here to my extended data section and I'm going to add one more field. I'm going to call it GPS and the data will simply be a calculation that combines the latitude and longitude and the name and uh, puts into a nice user-friendly format and the action for that field is set to map. I hit save, come back to my devices and now to get this change to appear I simply have to refresh my configuration or I can simply log out, log back in. I don't have to reinstall any piece of software. There's no new client. There's nothing to download. It's all coming down over the air as data. And you can see right away I now have a nice map view of all those store locations. I can zoom in. I can pan around. If I click on a little push pin I can see the name of, uh, of the store. And there we go. So now let's continue to make some improvements. I'm going to add a new screen, call it home. So this will be my new uh, startup screen, my new home screen. So that means I need to go to my locations list. And initially this was set as my startup screen. I'll simply uncheck that checkbox, select my home screen, and set that to be my startup screen. So when I launch the app, I want to come to the screen first. I'm also going to change one property, the data behavior property, to say um, this screen does not return any data. 
So I don't need to call the server. I don't need to read from a local uh, data store on the device. This screen is really more of a, of a placeholder screen uh, that will appear when we first uh, launch the app. I'll go to my toolbox and drag over a, a control, a button, give it a label, make it center justified, and I'm going to say the action for this button, when you click on it, go to the locations list, which is the screen that we just built with the map. I'm also going to add a control, we call it a screen host control, it's basically a, a container that can point to another screen in the application. I'll call it products and I'm going to point it to the product list screen. And I'll give it a height and width, my height will be about 75% and the width will be a, a full 100%. I save my change. Once again, I simply have to exit out and log back in. I can also automate that from the server side to, to do it to ensure that all users see the new configuration. You can see I've got that button that points to my map and then also a new list with some product details, a URL, and I can click on it and I see a product summary screen here uh, not very pretty yet, but we'll we'll fix that very soon. So let's go back in and uh, let's improve on that products list screen. Make another iteration. So here's that list. Right now it's a it's a a grid. So I'll change my display mode that drop down, and I'm going to choose image carousel, which will give me a more graphical view of these products. And once again, I'll pull up my uh, my simulators here simply have to refresh configuration. Now if you have a, a, a large um, user group, a, a large um, user community, you can, um, you can automate this process of the you know, refresh configuration um, from the server side. You can push out your changes so that users will automatically get them. So there we go. I log back in and right away you can see a nice uh, graphical view of these wines that we have in our inventory. I can swipe through and uh, we should see that on all devices momentarily. You saw that I clicked into a, a wine bottle and viewed the summary screen, and uh, there we go. So now let's let's do let's let's improve our last screen, which is that product summary screen. It currently has a white background, some basic text. Let me go to that screen in App Studio, and um, for this screen, I'll set the data behavior to be. Um, pre-filled from previous screen. So that means I'm going I'm to simply pass in data from my list, which will make it load uh, extremely quickly. And on this screen, I'm going to drag over a couple of what we call regions, which are basically, they're like containers. They're almost like div tags within HTML. Um, it's a way to group controls together. You can set a layout manager. So this guy, the parent region, I'll set as a horizontal um, layout, and the two children will be vertical. I'm going to add my image control to the top region, and I just converted it to from a text field to an image control. And I will specify a width for this region, about 35%. So then I've got name, description, and brand. I'm going to simply drag those over to my second or my third region. And for the name field, I want it to stand out a bit, so let me edit the style for that field. I'm going to bump up the font offset to be plus six. Give this guy a new uh, reusable name. So big name is the style. I can now reuse it anywhere else in the application, much, much like a style sheet. And the last thing I'll do is take this link control, which is basically a URL, and say the action should be browse. When I click on that URL, I want to open up uh, whatever link this, this guy points to. All right, so for the last time, come back to my devices, simply refresh my configuration because we're not compiling software, we're not generating code, there's nothing to reinstall. So here I click on my, uh, my wine bottle, get to a product summary screen, nicely formatted. I can swipe through to go to next and previous records. I can cl click on that link and I'm brought to the website for that, uh, for that product. You can see it as well on Android. And finally on the right, you can see it on Blackberry I click in and we see the details for that product. So there you have it side by side. Just to recap, within about um, eight or nine minutes, we built out an application that runs natively across multiple device types. We have uh, 
maps coming in. We've got data from a, a RESTful web service. We've got some images. We've got some gestures supported. Um, all pretty easy and all done uh, on the Verivo platform.